do or do not, there is no try. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, Your Highness. I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. I am your father. The Force will be with you always. When gone I am, the last of the Jedi will you be. The Force runs strong in your family. Pass on what you have learned. There are some characters in Star Wars with memorable lines. Others don't say much at all. Chewbacca is back for the next installment with his old friend Han Solo. Solo, a Star Wars story, is premiering in Cannes. It's directed by Ron Howard. Hello. Hello. George Lucas directed you in American Graffiti nearly half a century ago. Did he ever talk to you about his idea for Star Wars? Well, he didn't volunteer anything, but George is not very talkative, so he doesn't volunteer much. But one morning, those are all, that was all shot in a series of uh, nights. So about 3.30 in the morning, one time uh, freezing cold there in San Francisco, I said, what do you think you might want to do next? And he said, well, maybe a science fiction kind of a movie, sort of like a Flash Gordon or Buck Rogers, you know, but, you know, the special effects in those are so terrible. You can see the wires and the plastic spaceships bouncing around. I'd want to do realistic effects, like, like Kubrick, 2001, but, you know, but the spaceships go fast. And that was about it. Uh, and if there, you know, if it had been a movie and there'd been thought bubbles, I would have said, I don't know, George, dot, dot, dot. Uh, but um, I'm glad I didn't speak up because uh, he was certainly right. Five years later, when my wife Cheryl and I went to see the movie, we saw it twice in the same day, the first time. It was blew, blew us away. 50 years later, uh, you're making a Star Wars story, but it's not the first film you've made about space. You made Apollo 13 and back in 1995. Do the films have anything in common? Not, not much. <laughs> uh, not too much. That was so realistic, and this is, this is, this is myth. And it uses its own um, set of... Uh, Physics, the physics of space of Star Wars are, are, are all their own. Uh, e every story um, uses a dramatic situation to try to reveal something uh, of the human experience, whether it's, 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 uh, it's playful and, and mythic like Star Wars or whether it's, it's uh, you know, almost a, a journalistic tick-tock uh, like, uh, like Apollo 13 was. And, uh, and what I liked about this one was the way it focused on young Han Solo as a, as a sort of a defining adventure, a set of relationships, a set of events um, and, and conflicts that would, you know, begin to shape him. And I thought the screenplay did a great job of answering some of the questions that we might have about, you know, what, what would shape the personality of young Han Solo. But it did it in ways that um, were really gratifying and credible but surprising. So that, that's really what drew me into the story. You look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together a crew. I'm a driver and I'm a flyer. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Uh... Well, what do you know? You've dealt with a lot of real-life characters in your career, mm. like in Apollo 13, John Nash mm. in Beautiful Mind, and the mm. Beatles, Frost Nix mm. Nixon. Mm. However, what's the pressure like um, for Han Solo? It reminded me a lot of when I realized how important doing the Beatles documentary uh, eight days a week was to the fans, that it wasn't just another documentary about the Beatles, uh, but that for them, it, the stakes were high. And uh, that sense of responsibility is something I certainly feel around, around Star Wars. It's interesting that you would cite the true stories because I went into this and decided to treat it like it was a true story. And that the, the people who know the, the movies and really understand the galaxy, whether they're creature designers or visual effects supervisors or production designers, I use them as almost as technical advisors, like I would if it was uh, about Formula One racing or, or, uh, or, or NASA. And, go, and, and, and trying to go to the moon. And it was really a, 
it was really a fun, effective way, and it absolutely applied. The same methodology uh, re really, uh, really worked. I had a lot of fun. Divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Chewy, get in. I'll help land it. You won an Oscar for A Beautiful Mind. Um, you've made many iconic movies, such as um, Splash, Willow Cocoon. You're a prolific filmmaker. Um, but one thing we always um, remember you for is Richie Cunningham <laughs> in Happy Days. Um, is that a blessing or a curse? Oh, it's a blessing. Now, it's a, it, when I was younger, I was concerned that it might turn out to be a curse. Um, but at a certain point, you know, you recognize that you're you know, for me, I, my creative goals were, were being achieved, and, and, and uh, um, you know, there are no serious lim limitations. Oh, certainly, it's fun for people to sort of categorize me in a certain milk toasty, middle of the road kind of way, um, but I don't think that ever, re um, you know, even with critics, I don't think, I don't think, I think they're always fair with me. And they always look at the project and take it at face value. And, uh, you know, just as I hope uh, that uh, Solo, is ultimately judged on its on its uh, on its own merits and allowed to speak for itself. Another iconic um, figure in your history is the Fonzie. Mm -hmm. Who would you rather have dinner with, the Fonzie or Han Solo? Oh my! Well, f well, f the Fonzie is such a good friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, um, uh, you know, so Han Solo would be. Oh boy, if I had to choose, I, I can always have dinner with Fonz. <laughs> We're close. We talk all the time. That's easy. I think I'd have to choose. Uh, um, you know, I'd I'd I'd, uh, I'd I'd go with Han Solo. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> That's really a tough question. <laughs> I might be the only person. Who knows what you really are? What's that?